Good afternoon. Um, thanks for joining us. My name is Lee Jacobs. I'm from Forceful Charnery, and today I'm joined by Chris Leach from ICOM UK, and we're here to talk about all things ICOM. Um, but I'm really excited to um, talk with Chris and tell you guys about something that's uh, a world first, which is the new ICOM M94D first handheld VHF with a built-in AIS receiver. Um, and I'm going to hand over to Chris, who is with ICOM UK, and is going to tell us a little bit more about the, uh, the new world's first. Over to you, Chris. Uh, hi, Lee. Thank you. Yeah, I'm Chris Leach from ICOM UK. We're here in Kent, uh, live in Kent at our HQ. Um, ICOM UK, uh, we are um, an independent company from ICOM Japan, although we are uh, fully um, lined up with them. So we are ICOM UK. In effect, we're the manufacturer. Uh, been building radios for over 50 years, and yes, the 94DE is our latest uh, latest radio in the marine handheld range. And as you rightly point out, it's the world's first handheld VHF, DSC, GPS, and AIS receiver. So very, uh, very pleased with this product. Um, it's been something that we've been asked for by customers at various boat shows over, I would say, the last five years or so. So um, it's uh, ICOM responding to the market and coming out with a, a, a design that's based on previous well-proven models, such as the predecessor, the M93D. So yeah, this is the new M94D uh, DE from ICOM. Hi, uh, Chris. Um, this, before we really get into the meat of the uh, 94, there's just a few things we have from question, uh, some questions from them. Um, uh, customers and the first thing I just want to try and clear up is licensing. Um, do you need a license to use a handheld uh, uh, VHF with AIS and uh, DSC? Well, you need a license to use a VHF. The AIS and DSC are just features within the VHF pri pri primarily. Okay. So, so, so yes, you need a, a VHF license, which. Uh, it's a traditional, um, a, a traditional license um, called an SRC. You are officially meant to do an SRC. SRC, SRC stands for Short Range Certificates. Once you've done this course, which are run by the uh, RYA or RYA approved training centres, you can then apply for or you get a license, a radio user's license at the end of that particular course. The AIS and the DSC then all fall under that one uh, one VHF license that you have. Okay, and um, once you've got your license and you've got the radio, you, you register it with Ofcom. And it, say if you're a, a, a kayak user, are you okay to use that or do you have to be on a, a boat, a ship? No, so that's a really good question, Lee, um, and it's quite an important distinction. Um, so once you've got your license, you can then apply for uh, what's called an MMS, MMSI number. That's your own personal identity number. A fixed VHF, so an installed VHF that's mounted down at the chart table or on the flybridge, they require a slightly different sequence of nine-digit numbers to a handheld. So just be very careful when applying for a MMSI number for a handheld device, such as the M94D, make sure on the Ofcom website you select handheld radio or handheld VHF. So the MMSI number that goes in a handheld is different to that that you put into the vessel's VHF radio. So the radio is, uh, is tied to you as an individual. Right. It's not registered to a vessel. It's registered to you as an individual, allowing you to take it from boat to boat to boat, or in, uh, in, in, in terms of a kayak or canoe user, it's perfect for that. So in the worst case scenario, and you press the distress alert button, and the rescue organizations are coming looking for you, they're not looking for a particular boat, they're looking for an individual. Okay, brilliant. Um, you've managed to squeeze an AIS receiver in here, and yet you guys have somehow extended the battery life from the M93, the predecessor. How, how, how have you done that? Is it a completely different battery? I mean, uh, you've got an extra two hours, I believe, on, um, on uh, uh, 
lifetime, uh, sorry, uh, run time. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we were pleasantly surprised by the battery capacity. For example, the predecessor, which looks very similar, as you, as you know, Lee, the 93D, very similar looking radio, but it didn't have the AIS receive. So there's a lot more demand on the on the battery life on the M94D because it's not only running a VHF, it's got the constant running GPS for the DSC, and it's also got the um, additional power considerations of the AIS. So Icom Japan have developed a higher capacity, physically no bigger, but in terms of its capacity, its milliampere hours, it's significantly bigger than the predecessor. So the M93D, the predecessor had, I think it was around about 14, 50 milliampere hour battery. The uh, M94D, the new one, it has a 2,400 milliampere milli hour battery. So although the demand on the battery is greater, the battery life is, 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 is greater as well. So we are suggesting a 10 hour battery life. And if I may on that, Lee, um, our battery life is based on a ratio we call 95-5. So that's 90% of that specified time. So 90% of 10 hours with the VHF element of it on standby. 5% of the VHF transmitting and 5% of the VHF on receive. So 5% of 10 hours is five, sorry, it's half an hour of transmit time. So that's literally holding the PTT button, the press the transmit and down, uh, press the transmit button and doing a half an hour of transmit within that 10 hours. So we set a good day's use, 10 hours. But I, I think as most both users know half an hour of transmit time is actually quite quite a lot. So we think this could get you a good couple of days use between charges. Right. Um, yeah, the next next question is AIS. Um, what? Let's just go through the basics of AIS for people who don't know what AIS stands for. If you can just just run through that. Briefly, if that's okay. Sure. Well, it's an automatic identif identification system that was introduced for commercial shipping quite a few years ago. So it's one of those, such as DSC, for example, that that started its life in the commercial sector, and then it worked its way down to the general leisure um, um, area of, of of boating. So AIS is a signal that all commercial vessels. GMBSS style vessels, so vessels over a certain tonnage, or if they have a specific, a particular specialized use, have to carry an AIS transponder, which is transmitting their signal. It's within the VHF frequency range. That's why it really fits in with our products. So the AIS is transmitting on a frequency within the VHF, marine VHF spectrum. And that's going to all vessels in, in range, and it acts as a warning system, allowing other vessels to know the course, the movement, um, et cetera, of, 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 of the vessel, of the commercial vessel. So when, when, when this became an established system, the leisure side of the uh, industry realized this was an incredibly efficient way of really having a collision alarm system. So bear in mind all commercial vessels, the vessels that are really going to cause you harm under a collision, you know, a collision scenario are transmitting a signal that other equipment can then pick up and, uh, and, and use that data to warn the boat owner of commercial shipping traffic, their, their, their headings, their bearings, etc. So in effect, having an AIS receiver on a small boat comes almost like a it's, it's sort, sort of kind of going halfway towards what a radar would give you which is a fantastic relatively low cost collision avoidance device i hope that roughly perfect explains. yeah i noticed we had a question from uh, someone who's asking the sort of uh, uh, is it an affordable uh, vhf ais radio and and the price is is the street price is less than three hundred and fifty pounds, um, which you know, if you add up an AIS receiver and a handheld six watt VHF, it's a very good value. But the advantage of having both in one unit, I guess, Chris, is is that you can call a target directly 
um, from, from the unit? Yeah, you, you, you can. The Unfortunately, the AI, best way to explain this, so, you, so you've got uh, AIS, DSC and VHF all in one unit. So if you do see an AIS target that is, you, you would like to check their movements to see what, uh, what their intentions are, let's mm. say. Um, you can drop a cursor on the AIS target, then you can direct MMSI or DFT message that target to ask them what their intentions are. You can say small vessel to, uh, to, to, to port side, 1.5 miles, please let me know your intentions. Or you can prompt them to go to a voice channel to right. have a voice communication with them. Okay. Um, can you use, as it has a GPS built in it, can you use the M94 as a basic waypoint navigator? For example, if, you you, if your main set packed up, you know, your chart plot packed up, you lost power, can you use that to uh, go to waypoints? You can, yeah. It's got up to 100 waypoint storage in it, so it, it, it behaves and it acts just like a, a traditional GPS. So that's another feature within the GPS element, um, which is waypoints, yeah. So that will present itself as you would expect on a traditional GPS display with your waypoint and you get your cross-track error um, and, and that, that, that kind of display. So that's within the GPS side of the radio. Fantastic. And... Um a lot of people are, uh, are asking the questions regarding um, AIS beacons and distress beacons, man overboard beacons. Can that pick up those um, targets from distress beacons? It, it, it can, absolutely. So if an AIS, uh, sorry, if an MOB uh, alert is, is, is set on another uh, user's AIS transponder, bear in mind mm. that would have to be a transponder. Yeah. The M4DE is a receive only, but you will see the AIS target as an MOB. So you get the traditional man in the water displayed on your screen as, as transmitted from another AIS device, as long as that AIS device is a transponder. So yeah. you've, got, you've got two sides of MOB, which is, is worth clarifying. It will also pick up, for example, if a, um, if, if a search and rescue transponder was activated it will then also you will also see your mob um target on your screen as well so it will pick up a SARP search and rescue transponder distress as well right but also there's another element which gets slightly confused is that this has a, an mob feature but it's really designed you've got two two sides of it you've got mob so if you're in the cockpit and someone falls over the side, you can press MOB, and then it locks that as a waypoint. So you know what course and bearings the, the steer back to the position when someone went overboard. Also, if you fell overboard holding the radio, as soon as it goes into, we haven't really discussed the float and flash feature yet, but all, all our all um, icon, um, well not all of them, the, the, the large part of our range of handheld VHS have something called float and flash. So if they fall into the water, the radio starts flashing enabling you to retrieve it. Just if you look, drop it at night, for example. So there's two detectors on the radio, it knows when it's gone in the water. On MOB, if you fall in the water holding the radio, once the radio is in float and flash mode, for example, it's being submerged. All you then have to do is press the DSC button on the back, this stress alert button on the back, and it automatically goes out as an MOB, but over DSC. Right. It transmits that as a DSC, distress alert, MOB as standard. So it, does, it means you're not in the water scrolling through your designation. It goes, autom it goes out automatically as a man overboard as soon as it detects water on it. From being submerged so it's, it's it's very clever there's there's a lot there's a lot of new developments and and um and, and really quite significant uh, enhancements in the software on the 94 de and um, can you just um uh, go through the the red flap distress button which is uh, is on this unit and was on the predecessor um can you just go through how that does the um, DSC Mayday? How, what, how would you use it and how often does it actually dis, uh, uh, transmit that distress call? 
Right. The the um, this all goes back to DSD really, and this is the primary reason for digital selective calling. So traditionally, uh, pre DSD, you'd be on channel sixteen, uh, um, hailing Mayday. So a user, a crew member, would have to be tied to the VHF, hailing hey, Mayday while all hell is breaking loose and trying to establish the boat's position as well at the time of May Day, at the time of the May Day. With DSD, um, bearing in mind the radio is programmed with your personal identity number, so and it's got a GPS inbuilt, so it knows its position. When you press a distress alert button, your MMSI number, so your own personal identity number goes out, your uh, position goes out, and then you've got a choice. You can just hold and press, and your designation of the nature of the distress alert will go out as undesignated. If you've got a few, if you've got the time, you can once you press the DSE, the distress alert button once, you can then scroll through and select either MOB or fire, adrift, um, listing, sinking, etc., all the traditional distress alert um, uh, designations. If you haven't got time to do that, just hold and press, and it goes out as undesignated. So it's it's and that will carry on transmitting. Sorry to follow up on your earlier question. That will carry on transmitting until it's had an acknowledgement. Right. Okay. Um, so who I, I come manufacture quite a few handheld radios. Who would you recommend this radio to over a standard handheld? Um, one of your standard handheld VHS, say, uh, uh, M25 or an M73? Sure. Um, it's, it's, it's sometimes difficult to fully gauge how that's going to go, actually. Uh, bear with me one sec. We'll just get rid of some on the screen. Um, what, what we found, what we were surprised of, we, we do a lot of boat shows, as you, as you know, Lee. You, yeah. you, you do it yourselves. We do a lot of local events as well, supporting uh, Force Force Chandra, be it in Cardiff or Swansea or Plymouth or Livingston. Yeah. Uh, but we do these local events, so we do have a lot of opportunity to actually talk to the people who are using our radios. We also work really closely with the RNLI and the RYA as well. There's a big market for this. It, it, it is surprising. I mean, it's everything from a kayaker. And a lot of these kayakers, as you know, they go on expeditions. Yeah. yeah. And they're not just off for the day, they're off for the weekend. And Safety at sea is a really, really live, hot topic at the moment. Uh, every, it seems like every other weekend during the summer, we all hear on the radio, on the news, that a surfer or a, a dinghy sailor or a, a, a paddleboarder has, you know, drifted out to sea. And, and really, having a device like this gives you absolutely everything you need to get out of trouble. Yeah. You've got VHF, so you've got communication. You've got GPS, so you know where you are. Um, you've got DSE. You've got the reassurance of distress button on the back of the radio because you'll be in a panic when you really need to use this you'll forget probably everything you've been taught and you just want to hit a button and have that reassurance that that information has been sent out to everyone in vhf range now with the introduction of ais it gives you all your primary and quite crucial features and functions in one device so that can lend itself to the small boat market the kayak, dinghy, um, and canoe market, but also the small 24-footer, the Cornish crabber, the Cornish shrimper, that kind of vessel. Yeah. But also, as a backup for a powerboat or a, or a larger 30-foot-plus sailing boat as well. Yeah. Because if, in the worst-case example, and you get into a distress alert, if, 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 you, if you hit a submerged object, water comes on into the boat, the first thing to go will be your ship's batteries because they're relatively low in the vessel. Yeah. So there's a, there's a work, the worst case scenario is going to lose your onboard power, your 12 or 24 volts, quite quickly. With an M94 DE or similar similar product, you've got everything really to get you out, out of trouble that is non-dependent on the ship supply. So it's a fully, a fully charged radio. It will give you just about everything to get you out of trouble. You know, you've got your comms, you've got your DSC, and you've got your AIS. So it's quite a large market. Sorry, it's a bit woolly, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, um, and we we have other radios in the range, as you know. We have an M. Prices 
a factor as well. Yeah. A lot of people just want a, a very simple, basic handheld, especially if you're on a dinghy, you want something very, very simple. Yeah. On a sailing dinghy, you've yeah. got enough going on with the sheets and, and sailing the boat. So yeah. you want something very small, very lightweight, and stick it in your life jacket. Okay. And something like the M25 will be the perfect product for that. We do the M37, the one up from the 25, uh, uh, a commercial spec professional style radio. It's got more output, a few more features and functions. The RNLI use that, for example, so it meets a very, uh, a very high standard. We've got the M73, which is a die-cast alloy radio, super, super tough for yeah. really commercial, uh, heavy-duty environments. And then we have the M94DE, which comes with the DSC and the AIS. So there's only four radios in the in the in the basic leisure range, as it were. So the divide between which one you choose, I think, is quite clearly defined, and it's for the customer to choose which one suits him best. In my okay. Chris, I've had a, a question from someone who's asking about um, accessories. Does it support a, uh, a lapel mic? Um, what what accessories are available for the 94D? Yeah, there's 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 a whole there's a whole range of um, there's about a whole range. There is microphones available for the um, for the M94D, and they are lapel mics. And and, and and within themselves, they also float. Bear in mind, this is a floating radio. This is something that we. You and I probably Lee, take for granted a little bit now because we've been making yeah. radios for, for quite a number of years. But if I just sort of hold that up, it, it, it's actually quite a substantial piece of equipment with a large, mm. a large display. The only reason I haven't put the display on is that uh, I'm inside a building and it will just flash up um, GPS, GPS signal not acquired, and that'll be beeping in the background. But that's quite a substantial radio, and it and it floats. Okay. So um, to, to to make an accessory for a floating radio, that accessory can't compromise its buoyancy. It's 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 you know it's kind of a legality that we have to conform to. So the command mic, sorry, the microphones, the lapel style microphone, in their own right, float as well. So they're fully fully IPX seven or IPX eight waterproof. Okay. Um the last point I've got that I, I, I'd I like uh, some clarification on is um, active uh, of the noise cancelling. Is that on reception and transmission? Does it clean up on, on both? No, no it, it's for the receiving set. Right. So, so there's a clever bit of software in the, in the radio um, that detects your voice and separates it from background noise. It. It, it, it's, it's just it's, it's, it just can recognize the human voice as opposed to spurious or background noise and it cancels and it highlights and pushes your your voice up and background noise down so it's really beneficial to the receiving set right yeah however the this this radio the 94d comes with a 150 milliwatt uh, speakers we, we really pride ourselves on audio quality actually the audio quality is excellent on this it also comes with an aquaquake function so if you get water in the speaker which does and can happen yeah. uh, it has a it has a, what we call an aquaquake which you press and hold and it sends a, a deep bassy vibration into the speaker to disperse any water that like might have gathered as well so we're very very happy with the audio quality for you, for the person operating the radio, but the uh, active noise cancelling technology is really for the benefit of the receiving station. They hear you better. Okay. Um, Chris, we've got seven minutes left. <laughs> um, can we just have a talk about the new ICOM MA510TR AIS transponder, which I have a dummy here which you guys kindly sent me um can you just tell us a little bit about this and the differences between this device and the uh, and the ma500 tr which we've been selling for a few years other than you know obviously the color display but uh, can you just tell us a few points about that sure, sure. well, well as, you, as, you, as, you, as you mentioned the uh, the, the, the new ma500 sorry 510 tr which is here which you I, I can see. I can see what uh, what uh, what everyone else is seeing. Okay, it's not a great representation, but it's a full color wide angle TFT display. So the rep, you know, so the presentation's much uh, much much clearer. Um, 
in, ter in terms of improved features, it's basically uh, sort of simplified navigation functions and sort of enhanced features. Um, in, in terms of uh, in terms of brand new uh, uh, brand new features, the most important thing is the full color. Secondly, it's NMEA 2000. The predecessor was 0183, which was a little bit limited. Um, a lot a lot of people now are going through multiplexers, as, as you're probably aware, because we've got all sorts of CTOR, NMEA 2000, and yeah. NMEA 0183, and um, ver ver various protocols floating around the boat. And um, a multiplexer can help just stream all that. Um, However, 0183 was getting a little bit uh, long in the tooth. So the uh, MA510 is NMEA2000. It's also got um, an AIS USB, mini USB uh, output as well. So you can output target to laptops, computers, yeah. etc. Yeah. Um, you have a friends list in the new one. So anyone that is within your charter group, or if you're going for a two week holiday, there's still free boats on a, a small flotilla you can uh, designate your group, your friends, your club, and give them a different designation, and they come up in a different color on the display as well. So you've got all sorts of, you can use the color display to separate targets for a quick, easy visual between people you want to see and people you're not too too interested in. Um, but but that, that, that's, um, that's, that's, you know, just, just a reminder to everyone that might be listening, both for the, for the new, fixed set um ma 510 tr and also the 94 uh, de is really remember you can set a range ring around your vessel that's i think probably half the people who buy an ais device that's really what they want they want to set a safety ring a range ring around their vessel anything that crosses that range ring it gives them an audio alarm it draws their attention to a commercial vessel in proximity that range ring is fully down to the user to set, and then you can then go and track that target, that AIS target. Once you're tracking that target, you've got all sorts of features and functions that then allow you to communicate with that uh, that target through VHF. On the um, on the fixed AIS, and I'm sorry, this is something we forgot to mention as well. It's a transponder, of course. Whereas the uh, AIS in an M94DE is receive only, the MA510 is a transponder. So it's transmitting your vessel's position um, and your vessel's target information as well as receiving. So that's quite an important distinction as well. Okay, Chris, we've got two minutes left. I'm going to put you on the spot here, I'm afraid. Um, sure, sure. I'm going to fire some boat types at you. And yeah. can you tell me the... Give me the ICOM radio that you recommend for that application or boat type. So um, I'm going to start with something. We've covered it, this slightly. A kayak. <coughs> a, a, a kayak. Yeah. Well, I would say if you want uh, just a radio, that, you know, just a, a good solid all round radio, you can go for the ICOM M25. It's a good little unit. It's USB charging. You, you guys sell thousands of them every year. Yeah. It's a well proven little radio. It's voice comms only. Okay. Um, so, here, Jeff. Uh, a sailing dinghy. A sailing dinghy. Again, we mentioned earlier that uh, you've got a lot going on in the dinghy. And, and I've done, as, as Ports 4 have done, we've done a few of those RYA dinghy shows up yeah. in uh, Alexander Palace. And if you watch the stage show that's running all day long, a, a, a real new important feature within the RYA Safety at Sea is pushing handheld use for people on dinghies, for kids as well on dinghies. There has been some tragic incidences, which I'm not going to exploit in any way, but you know, you can buy, you can buy a handheld radio from, from force four. Okay. 40 pounds. And yeah. that gets you, out, that gets you out of trouble. Motor or, with a fly bridge. Well, there's no reason to go up to a, a, a full, fully functioned then like four DE as well. It, it, right. it depends on the nature of sailing. Okay. Um, Last question, because we're running out of time now. If you're going to buy an Icom M25, would it be blue or grey? Me, personally? Yes. <laughs> Is that, I, I think I'd buy blue. Yeah, maybe, yeah. yeah. What about you? What would you buy? Are you blue. a grey or a blue, blue kind of? Blue, blue. And, and, and that's it. We're, um, 
we've run out of time and we could spend probably another few hours discussing the radios but thanks very much chris for helping us out here and cover some good um good ground there and um perhaps we'll do this again um next time uh, yeah fantastic well thanks for having us that did go very very quickly i, th I think elise and you guys have got a method for pushing uh, any further questions or or, or, or you know, passing on any further questions from your customers to me so yes. I, yeah. i'm more than happy to to do all the follow-up necessary on this so thanks a lot lee okay and thanks, thanks elise